Today we're going to talk about a Nissan Frontier pickup truck. Often the forgotten pickup truck. They can be very good trucks to buy used. Now the Frontier started out as the replacement for the old Nissan hard body that had little four cylinders. They could run forever just like the little bitty Toyota pickup trucks, right? When they started making the Frontiers, they added one big thing. And here it is under the hood. Nissan V6 engine. You can carry, you can tow. They're very good engines. The new ones put over 300 horsepower. They are screaming motors. They're very reliable. Instead of the hard body, which is a little truck, they could last a long time just like a Toyota Tacoma, but they're kind of underpowered. These are not underpowered. Now, this is an older one, and unfortunately, it's still got a rubber timing belt in it. Modern ones have timing chains in them. Well, he just had this replaced, mainly because of the age, and it's got almost 100,000 miles. It's 96,000 miles. If that rubber belt breaks, pistons hit the valves goodbye engine. So he had that changed out, so he's not gonna have to worry about it. It's only a problem if you don't take care of it, it gets old and rotten and cracks and breaks, and there goes your engine. So if you're looking at one of these, if it's got a timing chain, you don't have to think about it. But if it's got a belt, good idea to change it if it's got 100,000 miles, or if it's eight, 10 years old, that's a good thing to do. Over the course of time, the back of the frame rotted. You can see here, when they done welding, you did have to have this replaced because it did rot away. Toyota had the same problem with the Tacomas and some of the Tundras. So if you're looking at one of these used, definitely check the frame. Now there's a lot of superficial rust here, but it's still solid. I'd sand all that down and recoat it myself just to make it last longer. Make excellent work trucks because they got full size beds. Yeah, the plastic fades away. Plastic liner's still good on it. They're great for hauling stuff. He's never towed with it. But if you want to tow, this baby can tow 6300 with their automatic transmission. 6500 if you have a manual. And he was smart, he bought it used. Here's the thing. People I say, Scotty, I want to get a Toyota Tacoma or a Toyota Tundra. But the prices are so insanely high. People are now paying more for used Tacomas than a new one goes for in many cases. You got a good price on this years ago, and it's been a good truck. You're going to find a much better price on a Frontier than you are in a Tacoma or a Tundra for sure. That's just how it goes. The Toyotas, people like them. Prices go up. They just start charging more and more and more. But these are solid trucks. It's not like they're problematical trucks. This is a 4x4 off-road. Ironically enough, the guy's never taken it off-road, but he uses it in Connecticut in the winter. He said it's a beast. He can get through all kinds of snow with it. And unlike the front-wheel drive Jadco transmissions, his grandmother had a Sentra in 2001. Tranny went out at like 70,000 miles. This is a rear wheel drive transmission. And for my 53 years experience of working on cars, rarely do I see one of these Nissan rear wheel drive transmissions break down. They make them better. They're kind of like old American cars. Americans made great transmissions for rear wheel drive, but when they started to make front wheel drives, they all fell apart. Didn't matter if it was Ford, GM, Chrysler, they were never any good at making front wheel drive transmissions. Let's start up and listen to it. Start right up, sounds pretty good. You just hear the valves and the cams rolling a little. Any engine is gonna make a little bit of noise. It's not gonna be perfect, but this one is in decent shape. Now all the cars and these plastic headlamps are gonna fog. You can polish those up if you want or buy aftermarket ones cheaply and off. But the four wheel drive still works perfectly fine. He's had no problems with that. You get the old scan tool out. Let's check this baby out. And here we go, it's going through everything. System diagnosis, 16 pin, it's 1% done. This might gonna take a while. Well, while we're waiting for it to load, because it is older, he did have to replace the catalytic converter. Not because it tripped the catalytic converter code, because it rusted out. <laughs> Nissan has a history of making crappy catalytic converters. All my customers with Nissans over the course of time and Infinity, same company, you got to buy catalytic converters because they just put cheap ones on. It's just the company went a little bit too cheap. Renault took over Nissan in 2000. The quality started to go down, and this is a 2003. It was after that, and he had to replace the catalytic converter because it just rotted away. It was so cheaply made. So watch out for stuff like that. And so far, you got a bunch of greens. No, maybe an old vehicle, but everything was green except for the ABS system. Who really cares about that, but we'll see what it is. It says the front left-hand sensor has a problem. Yeah, the problem is it's 19 years old. <laughs> when they get to be this old, and especially with Ross, but it shows how well-made this particular truck was. That was the only problem. Now we'll look at live data. It's hiding here somewhere. There it is. And here we go. We'll start looking to see if anything's weird. That's all green. And everything else is good too. Blue is the same as green. It means good. If it gets red, 
it's got a problem. They're all perfectly clean. We can feel a slight roll in the idle, and as you can see, the oxygen sensor on bank one and bank two, they're slightly off. They're off by a tiny bit. It's not going to trip a code because it's got to be off 20% or more, and it's only off point. 2.1 of 1%, so that's not bad, but it shows that one side versus the other isn't exactly perfect. And from my experience with these, often the intake manifold will have a tiny leak on one side, not in the other, or one fuel injector's running a little bit off from the others. You could try putting a little fuel injector cleaner in it, but it runs perfectly fine. Most people aren't going to care about that. If it had been 5%, 10%, then you start thinking, but that's such a low percent, it really doesn't matter. Now, as we close the door, Got a nice solid sound, but got manual door locks. And for those of you who are young and don't understand, it has hand crank windows. Look at that. It's just nice and high up in the air. Got that powerful V6 engine in it. It's still a very reliable truck. So we'll try the old engine out. It's got plenty of horsepower in it. No problem with it. As you can see, it still shifts really smooth. It still runs great. And yeah, it did have frame problems. So if you're looking at one of these used, look at the frame, get out of there. Check the frame out, get a hammer. If it goes conk, conk, great. Right? If it goes crunch, crunch, don't buy it. You don't want to mess with one with a rotten frame. But from my experience of these things, it's mainly up north where they rot. Cause I never saw one in Texas or New Mexico or California that had a rotten frame on it. It's the salt on the road that they use in the winter here. And anything that's a little bit weak, it accentuates the rust and makes them rot out faster. So if you're disgusted by the high price of used Toyota pickup trucks, maybe try to get a Nissan Frontier used pickup truck. They can still be pretty good trucks and you can get them a whole bunch cheaper. All right, my customer just bought this used 250 Ford pickup truck with about 280,000 miles on it. He paid $6,300 and he wants to know with 280,000 miles on it, it's going to be safe for him to tow his stuff back to Minnesota from Kentucky. He'll be pulling about 10,000 pounds. Now physically it's in excellent shape. Body's in good shape. It's got a big old bed. Engine runs good. It doesn't smoke. It doesn't burn oil. 5.4 liter V8 engine hooked up to a pretty durable five-speed automatic transmission. We're gonna check all that, but first he said it's shimmying a little at highway speed, so we'll check the front end. Jack it up, get the wheel off the ground. Let's see if there's any play. Not really. The tire wobbles a little. It might be able to be rebalanced, or it might need a new tire, but this part of the front end's okay. Now I'll jack up the other side, and we'll check it for wear. We'll pull on it. Nothing outrageous. Spend a tire. Now he's planning on taking on a trip with a lot of weight, so listen to this. Is that rattling? It's gonna need a left front wheel bearing. In fact, wheel bearings to wear out with 280,000 miles on it. And me, if it was my truck, I would change both wheel bearings just to make it safe so you could drive it for a long time. You can get aftermarket ones that work perfectly fine. So let's start up and listen to it. <laughs> Sounds decent. I can hear a little lifter clacking, but you expect that on an old engine. You could replace off the lifters and spend a fortune, but if it runs okay, who cares? It recently passed the emissions test in Nashville, so he didn't care. Runs as good as this thing does, leave it alone. Don't waste your money on something like that. Now let's check the dad and scan it. Plug it in and let it do its thing. There she goes. Now me Elliot says there's no powertrain, trouble codes or freeze frames, so we know there's nothing wrong with that. So let's go to live dead. Fuel trim, short term bank one, it's pretty close to zero. Long term, it's adding a little fuel. Typical as they age, the injectors won't spray just perfectly. And you could have just not enough fuel going in. And we'll look at bank two. Bank two, it's the same. It's two minus, it moves around a little, but that's okay. And both long term fuel trim is 4.7 on each so it's even so it's not running on evenly shows you the fuel rail pressure that's working pretty good do a ford oem enhanced check we'll go to key on engine running turn the steering wheel to the left press and release the brake pedal cycle the overdrive switch they make you do all kinds of crazy stuff. Fords have this pretty decent self-diagnostic system. So while I'm sitting there, the computer's running through the whole thing. And here's an interesting thing. You know, so when you turn the overdrive off, it's your towing and hauling. They're smart enough to realize if you're going to be towing stuff, you don't want to be in the top overdrive gear. It's too much strain. So it cuts that out when you're towing, which is what he's going to be doing from here, Tennessee. 
to Minnesota. You can see it now rev the engine down. It revs it up and down and checks all the systems. And the only thing it found wrong was P1464. AC switched on during self-test. Which I don't care about at all because it's hot outside. And I want to stay cool inside here. That's the only code. If I turn it off, that wouldn't even show. But I don't care. I'm staying cool. So I'm leaving it on. And now we'll do an all module scan. Let's scan all the modules. It takes a little while, but it checks everything. 76% done now. Got an ABS problem, which we knew because the light's on. He has tape covering it up. We don't care about that. He doesn't care. The instrument cluster, same thing. He doesn't care about that. Nothing else that really means anything. I mean, if you really want to see what the instrument panel is, it'll be some stupid code. Ignition key and circuit fault. They get all down and trip crap like that. You don't care. It starts, it runs. That's more of a ghost code. So let's take it for a spin. Now we knew this thing was ready to tow 15,000 pounds. He says he's going to tow 10,000. I'll take it for a spin and see how I feel about that. Now these are high up in the air, serious trucks, big old side mirrors so you can tow stuff safely. And the front end handles pretty good. The only thing is, like I say, that left front wheel bearings going to need replacing. If you listen closely, there, you can hear it. When I steer to the left, that has a bad bearing. You can hear it growl. I'll do it again. Hear that growl? That means the left front wheel bearing needs changing. No, I can hear as it shifts. Going uphill. Shifts pretty smooth. No real drag or anything on it. Tranny's in good shape. Let's see how much of the original 300 horsepower it has left. Well, it's lost some, that's for sure. You can see when I really got on it there, it did shift a little rougher. I'd say this thing probably has, I don't know, 220 horsepower left. It's lost some of its horsepower, but hey, he only paid 6,300 bucks for it. And the shocks are certainly worn, it's kind of rough. Some of them would still be original, but he bought this to tow stuff. From Tennessee to Minnesota, I don't think it's gonna have a problem towing if he drives conservatively. After all, this is an F-250 in its twilight years. You can tow and stuff with all that mileage on it, but I predict this thing will have no problems going to Minnesota, pulling a 10,000 pound trailer, if the left front wheel bearing has changed. And hey, the AC is still blowing freezing cold. And it's still idle, smooth as silk. It doesn't shake at all. Now you will notice when I drive it gently, the shifts are a lot smoother. So the transmission isn't bad. It's worn, no fooling. It's got 280,000 miles. But when you drive it normally, hey, the thing shifts very smooth. It's only when you really get on it that it gets harsh. And let's face it, you don't buy an old truck like this for $6,300 and then expect it to drive like a drag racer and tow 10,000 pounds and floor it and race people. No, you baby it then. And I think if he babies it and changes that wheel bearing, you won't have any problems at all. And you can hear as you're cruising along, the lifters, the hydraulic lifters and the engine. Ah, oh, the race sound all that bad. They're worn, but what the heck. So there you have it. A used F-250, bought for 6,300 bucks. The only thing he's got to put on is that left front wheel bearing. Probably not have any worries at all, as long as he babies it. There aren't too many miles between Tennessee and Minnesota anyways. Most of it's pretty flat level driving. So basically, it's an oldie, but still a goodie. Yes, this guy from Green Bay recently bought a used Toyota Tundra for only four grand, and what a deal. It only had 89,000 miles on it, so you know the thing's in excellent shape, right? A guy in Green Bay had a bunch of stuff, and he had to get rid of one of his vehicles because the city was saying, we're gonna take them away if you don't clean that mess up, so he sold this. I think guy made a mistake. I would've sold something else. Body's in excellent shape, and check this out. This guy knows what he's doing. It didn't come with a camper top. He went to Facebook Marketplace, and believe it or not, Wisconsin, people up there are friendly. He got it for nothing. The guy had it lying around, it was his sons who were just sitting there, and he gave it to him. What a deal, but the deals go on in this truck. A bunch of these Toyota trucks had problems with the frames rusting, right? Sometimes Toyota, yes, sometimes no, but in this case, he got a free frame. They said, if you're in a northern state, and you can't get much more northern than Wisconsin, they're gonna replace the frame free. So, as we look under, check it out. <laughs> look at this beautiful frame. It is brand spanking new. They did it, and they didn't charge him a penny. Look at that. That job with the frame would have cost a heck of a lot more money than he paid for the whole truck. He recently took it into a garage to get some stuff done. Guy told him, well, you got a $12,000 truck now that he paid 
four grand for. Still deals out there. If you look around, he looked around. This guy had all these vehicles. He had to get rid of one. When people have to get rid of something, that's when you want to buy. He didn't get rid of it because it was falling apart. It runs perfectly fine. He got rid of it because he had too many vehicles and he had to get rid of one of them. Now, of course, you're never going to deal like this at a car lot or anything. I mean, they're looking for vehicles like this and they're going to try to sell it to you for 12 grand. If it had a new frame on it, that is the one problem with these. You got to watch out. Frames do rot. And if you remember last year, I made a video with a guy who was from uh, Indiana and they refused to do his frame even though it was rotting. Now, I don't know, I guess they're not including Indiana as a northern state. It is kind of, you know, in between. I guess technically they could call it Midwestern, right? And they refused to put his frame on, yet this guy just bought this thing and Toyota put the frame on him. No questions asked. So, you know, you never know what's going on. Obviously, the guys in Wisconsin have dealt with a lot more than the guys in Indiana or vice versa, the guys in Indiana are told, oh, we can't do any more frames, so they don't do any more, because he had it done in Wisconsin. So kudos to Toyota for treating him, right? Guy in Indiana, not so much. He's not happy. He's still mad as a hornet, and I don't blame him. Maybe he should move to Wisconsin and try it there. Of course, they know who he is now, and I doubt if they'll give him a free frame. But this guy got this free frame. Vehicle he paid four grand for because he lives in Wisconsin. It was a Wisconsin vehicle. And the owner just informed me, they're still doing it. When he went to the dealer, he saw piles of new frames sitting outside. So, if you live in a northern climate, you get one of these cheap with a rotten frame, hey, buy it and take it to Toyota. Get a new frame put on that thing. You can see, this isn't some patched up piece of junk. It is a brand new frame. So let's check this truck out. It's a Tundra. Now, it's an older Tundra. It's got a V6. Now, there's nothing wrong with a V6 if you want a general truck. Of course, the Toyota V6s are very dependable and It's a 3400 4 cam. These things can run forever. Now, yeah, it's got a timing belt instead of a timing chain, but really, the 3400 4 cam is not an interference engine. So if the timing belt breaks, it isn't going to hurt anything. And if you think about it, the new Tundras, they're only coming with V6 engines. Now they're a completely different engine. They got timing chains, they're twin turbo. They make this old technology look like something from the dinosaur ages, but on a behalf of this, the dinosaurs lasted hundreds of millions of years. These engines can last a long time. All that high tech technology, what's gonna happen in the future, they're certainly not gonna be as easy to fix as these. If something goes wrong with this, they're very simple to fix. The newer ones, you're getting to another level of technology. Of course, all the pros want a V8 and a Tundra. But you can see, it's made for a V8. But with a 6, there's all kinds of working room. And really, for the purposes of this vehicle, this engine's fine. And as you can see inside, they were sleeping in it on the way from Green Bay. Hey, there's an awful lot of room in here. As a matter of fact, they spent a night in a Walmart parking lot when they're coming here from Green Bay. Comfy in there, there's plenty of room. You're safe from the elements. Where can you get a camper for $4,000, a free frame that costs you nothing? You got one heck of a deal on this vehicle. Now, as we look underneath, it's conventional. It's just rear wheel drive. The fronts are just spinning and the differential way back there. That's what drives the truck with only 80 something thousand miles on it. And this is during the coronavirus epidemic too, where the prices have gone sky high when people need to get rid of something and they need money. Get a used TV, they go for nothing. You sell one, you're going to get nothing. The vehicle is one of the only ways you're going to be able to get cash. Take advantage of that situation. There's plenty of people that have lots of vehicles. They're tired of one, they want to sell another. They're looking for something, or maybe they're really cash strapped for some deal. That's when you jump on these things. You don't go to the lots. Like I say, if this was on a lot with a new frame, they would have gone twelve, fourteen thousand dollars. But look around. These things do exist. This man is proof. In the United States, Green Bay, it's not some other foreign country. Okay, and it's really old. Who cares? It's a Toyota. Plug in the old scan tool. Start some diagnosis. The automatic scan. Now it is an old vehicle, so you can see there's a few codes. We'll start with the cruise control, which who really cares? You expect that thing to last when it's this old. Strangely enough, you can see the cruise control has the same code as the engine and ECT. That's obviously some kind of software. The oxygen sensor doesn't, you know, make the cruise control system work. It's just some kind of a glitch there. So P0037 and P0136, the control circuit, the oxygen sensor heater, and another code for the oxygen sensor. 
bank one sensor two. Now this is a notorious failure. Toyota V6 engines, the oxygen sensor heater circuit burns out. That's to make the oxygen sensor warm up faster. So first, the first minute or two of operation, your car won't pollute as much. You know, it's one of these crazy things. This guy lives in Wisconsin in a county that doesn't do emissions, so he doesn't care. So if you have these codes, especially it says the control circuit, of the heater is low. If you want to change bank one sensor to the sensor that's by the catalytic converter, go right ahead, that'll fix your problem. The car won't run any better, but you'll legally be able to get your car inspected. So no one really cares about that. And an old car like this, they don't inspect them, who cares? And hilariously enough in this car, you can see the check engine light works, there it is. I have the key turned on, and when we start the car, <laughs> It doesn't even come back on. Now, technically, it's supposed to come on because it's got that trouble code set. Well, it doesn't, but who really cares? Like, the guy doesn't need to get inspected. It will run perfectly fine that way. So let's look at the live data to see what shape this engine is in. This is an older vehicle. It doesn't have the insane amount of data that the modern one does, but as you see, as I quick scroll through, still got a whole bunch of data points. It's got 97 of them. The short-term fuel trim, it's adding 2%. Now it's adding only 0.74, hardly anything. It moves up and down a little. You're gonna get that with an old vehicle. And the long-term fuel trim is, it's adding 3%, which means the vehicle's running just ever so slightly lean. Now, it's an old car, sat around a lot. What the heck? I would run some of that ATS fuel system cleaner through the gas tank. You might find the trims will go almost to zero because the fuel injector is probably a little bit dirty. I mean, it's off a little bit. And I would also run a vacuum test to see if there's any vacuum leaks. We'll go under the hood in a second and see if we can hear anything. But you know, no big deal on a car this old. You can see the ignition advances stable, so the timing belt's still in good shape. The trim is almost perfect. 1.00 is perfect. Oh, now it went to 0.99. 1.0, almost perfect for an old vehicle. It's, it's how amazing these Toyotas can be. You can see it's got 0.00 misfires. That's not having any problems. You can see the fuel injectors are staying stable at 2.8 milliseconds. And even though it showed that code for the oxygen sensor heater, you can see the oxygen sensor tests are complete. And even today, check engine light didn't come back on. So the oxygen sensors are working perfectly. You're gonna get a little glitches like that in old vehicles. It's just the way it goes. So really, for such an old vehicle, idle's like a dream. One heck of a deal for four grand. Now yeah, it had a rotten frame, but he got the frame replaced. And as he said in Wisconsin, they got loads of them outside waiting to put on. Now, from what he told me, they said they only do it in northern states. So if you're in the northern state, you can find one of these rusted ones, not a bad deal deal at all. A phenomenal deal. He could sell it and make money if he wanted, but he likes the truck. Now, breaking news flash. I just talked to the owner and he said, well, I actually changed the oxygen sensor, but my machine doesn't clear codes. So I'm going to clear the codes for him now. And that clears up. Gee, why isn't the check engine light on, but it's got this code. It's because the code wasn't erased. Theoretically, they will erase themselves as you drive, but it doesn't always work. So there's a good tip. Whenever you got codes and you fix something, erase it like this before you start driving it around. So we just got to clear trouble codes and we cleared the trouble codes and erased them, okay. There are no codes, we fixed that problem. And what does that show us? That shows us people should always communicate. Mechanics, customers should always communicate. Tell everything you know, everything you've done. Don't hide anything. I sometimes spend days working on cars only to find out that the customer was so embarrassed to how they ruined their car that they weren't going to tell me the truth. And I said, look, I'm not putting a judgment on you. I want to fix your car, not wasting time. So tell me exactly everything that happened. And then if they say, well, we were on the highway and we ran over something, then immediately I look there and I find the problem. So don't hide things from your mechanic. And if you have a mechanic you have to hide things from, here's my advice. Find another mechanic, guy like me, who doesn't judge you, just wants to fix your car as fast and as cheaply as possible. You know, this is as smooth as can be. And yeah, it's a pickup truck. It's nice and high up in the air. Step on the gas. And six has got enough power. And as old as it is, hey, still handles pretty good on the curves. It's a pickup truck. It's not a race car. It's a rear wheel drive pickup truck, but it is a Toyota Tundra. And even though it's only got the V6 engine, it's still extremely reliable. It will get slightly better gas mileage than the eights. The eights are absolute gas hogs. So, if you want a pickup truck to knock around, you can find one like this with the six. Don't poo-poo the six-cylinder engine. Yeah, it doesn't have the insane hauling ability of the eight for sure, but it's still a very dependable truck. As we take it to drag strip alley and step on the gas. 
a ghost, it's not a race truck, but hey, listen to the engine. The shifts were still very smooth. All in all, an insane deal for $4,000. Right now, with the low miles that it's got on it, this thing might go another three, four, five hundred thousand miles. So kudos to Toyota for putting a free frame on. What a deal. If you can find a deal like this on a Toyota Tundra with that low mileage, let me tell you, snap it up. Even if you don't want a pickup truck, you can make a lot of money selling it on to somebody else. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.